everyone and welcome back to the fortitude fix i hope you're well if you are new here welcome go ahead and click that subscribe button down below if you haven't already my name is Deshauna, and i make lifestyle and mommyhood videos here on this channel so if you are interested in any of the type of content, I will go ahead and leave some links to my different playlists down below. I am currently in my second trimester. I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant with baby girl here due in September. This is our first baby and I'm documenting the whole thing for you. So if you are interested in seeing what's been going on, um go ahead and subscribe this is a fast growing family over here and i would love to have you a part of it so in today's video i am starting a brand new series here on this channel and today is the kickoff and i am titling it you are still a great mom if so in this series i am going to be addressing some of the more controversial or taboo topics within the mommy community and offering just some of my thoughts on them in hopes to educate and inspire you all. That is the point of this channel. And honestly, I just want to spread as much love and positivity as I possibly can, especially now that I am here and pregnant and going to be experiencing some of these things myself. For those of you who do not know, I am a trans trained labor and birth doula. I have been a doula for the past four years. I am not currently practicing my doula work right now simply because I'm pregnant. We are in quarantine, shelter in place, uh, but also I haven't been practicing in quite a while just because of my work schedule and things that have been going on in life. But I'm also a health educator. I have been educating and teaching in the classrooms on various health topics for the past 11 years or so so that is something i am super passionate about and that's also part of this channel is me offering my input my thoughts and my using my educator background to bring some of this information your way but all things pregnancy and birth are super important to me and now that I am able to go through this, especially living with sickle cell disease, this is a really important time in my life and I'm so excited to be able to document and just to bring my own spin on some of these topics that are chatted about here on the internet. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is C-section versus vaginal birth and I know this is a huge topic I know that everyone has their own experience I want to just let you know I have not given birth yet this is my first baby but it is a topic that is discussed a lot and I recently saw a conversation happening in the comments of a doula a fellow doula that I follow on Instagram and I was shocked and appalled at some of the comments that I was seeing people actually writing out about whether you know like your worth as a mom or as a parent you know depending on if you had a vaginal birth or a cesarean and I just I cannot with this so wanted to make a video to address it and hopefully educate some people because this is something that hurts my heart to see when moms or parents are like going at each other for their own separate experiences or their own different decisions just because something worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else and vice versa and i think there's no handbook regardless of what you may find on amazon there's no handbook that says this is how you have to parent every child is different every family is different our core values are different and yeah so welcome <laughs> to this brand new series. Yeah, I know some people might, what do you mean I'm still a mom? You mean I'm not a great mom? Anybody? No, it doesn't mean anything like that. I just want to address some of these controversial and taboo topics in a way that leaves you feeling positive and uplifted, regardless of the experience that you've had. So today we'll be talking about cesarean birth versus vaginal birth. There are a few statements that I've heard regarding cesarean births and I want to address them. The first one, 
Having a cesarean is not real birth. Number two, having a cesarean is a cop out. It's the easy way out. Number three, once a C-section, always a C-section. I cannot begin to tell you how many of these, how many of these statements are out there, but also how these statements make my blood boil. <laughs> I don't like it and I want to address it. First off, saying that it's not a real birth if you have a cesarean, I mean, if you are pregnant and you are carrying life and you then bring that life earth side in the physical flesh, you have given birth, regardless if you have a C-section or if you have a vaginal birth. I often hear, um, you know, I'm having a natural birth. Well, I have a natural birth. All birth is natural. Like, I, I I don't like I don't like that terminology that's used as a way to put other moms down who've had a different experience. Because someone has a cesarean doesn't mean that their birth wasn't natural. Maybe what you mean is unmedicated. Maybe you mean that your birth didn't involve uh, any surgery or that it didn't involve an epidural or any pain meds. But to say that a birth is unnatural if it's this way and only this way is natural, that just isn't right. And I want us to be able to uplift each other here in the mommy community, especially on the internet where people get real bold behind a screen. Let's just lay that to rest. The second one is that it's easier. I mean, come on, it's labor, it's birth, it's it's not always a walk in the park, but that's regardless of what type of birth experience you have. To say that it's easier is to really not understand exactly what cesarean is. Having a cesarean is major surgery. It requires a lot of recovery and it takes a badass <laughs> to get through that. And I just wanna say that if you are a mama who's had a cesarean, multiple cesareans, or are thinking about having one in the future, please understand that this is not a cop-out. There are so many different reasons why somebody might have a cesarean. It could be because they wanted to, elective. You know what, I'm gonna go in, this is what I want, I wanna be able to know when baby's coming, etc., etc. It could be that the body is not necessarily doing what it's supposed to do. Maybe they're not dilating. Their, their cervix is not opening at a well enough pace. Maybe there's been way too much time from the time water broke to the time that, you know, a emergency cesarean is declared because of the risk of infection. Maybe baby's heart rate is not doing well with labor and contractions. Perhaps this person has been in labor for days and they don't feel comfortable continuing on for the health of baby or the health of, of birthing parent. So it is not okay to judge and say that it's easier and that it's a cop out. There are so many different reasons why someone might have a cesarean. And I think we need to be more open-minded and understanding about that. The third one is once a C-section, always a C-section. That is completely not true. If somebody has a C-section, right? Let's say this is baby number one for them. Baby number two could very well be born via something called a VBAC, meaning a vaginal birth after cesarean, a VBAC. And there are many folks who maybe wish to go through another C-section for whatever reason. It may be something that they don't want to do and something that they want to try for is having a vaginal delivery. And so they'll talk to their doctor about whether they are the proper candidate for something like a VBAC, right? Having a vaginal birth after cesarean. So I don't want anyone watching this to get the idea that, oh, if you have a C-section, you just have to have more and more C-sections. That's not always the case. There are some health-related issues that come into play, right? And the doctor and the uh, birthing parent uh, and the birthing person's decision-making around that, but understanding it's not, a, it's not necessarily like a cause and effect type of thing. Uh, it, there's more that goes into that. And yes, it is true, right, that about one in three births are a cesarean birth. That does not mean that every birth has to continue to be a C-section 
after the first one took place. So I only talked about three different statements that I've heard, but I also want to talk about why some of these statements exist. I think that one, some people have a particular birth experience in mind and that particular birth experience comes to fruition for them and they can't fathom having a different experience. So what they say on these blogs or you know in comment sections of videos is really hurtful and they may not even understand how or why. Um, and I hope this video helps with that. A lot of people have different ideas or stereotypes surrounding uh, you know cesarean sections and it kind of leads them to talk but not necessarily speak from a place of education and uh, knowledge and I would encourage those who are curious or those who have these ideas or these statements if, if we've made any of those ourselves to really kind of do some research and, and immerse ourselves in some of that information that's out there. Another reason could be that these individuals who are making these types of statements don't know anyone who's had a c-section so it's not hitting home to them. It's not like oh my best friend or my sister or my mom had a c-section and they're telling me all about their story and I empathize with them, I share with them, I hear how they speak of their experience and you know so some of that is coming from a very uh, naive place and I encourage those who have only had one type of you know, labor and delivery scenario to seek out and maybe talk to others and ask them, how was your birth experience? You know, what did you go through? And do you mind sharing some of that with me? And uh, I think that's a wonderful place to start. Long story short, you are still a badass. You are still a great, wonderful mom, even if you have had a cesarean section. Who knew? I knew, and I want you to know that too. Please do not let these comments on these mommy blogs, these like one-off sayings that people are sharing affect you. You did whatever it is that you needed to do to get your baby here earth side and no matter what, nobody can tell you anything about how that happened and you are amazing and what you have gone through and your experience matters and if we are folks who have said some of these things before, I encourage us to kind of change our thinking, at least educate ourselves, and maybe choose our words a little bit differently because a person's experience with birth is very physical, it's very emotional, it's very spiritual, it's, it's very uh, sacred, and it's something that you don't forget. And all of the love and support or lack thereof are things that we remember and I want everyone to be educated and have an open-minded perspective um, that you know your birth your labor may not go as planned but it's great to have a plan and it's also great to know that regardless you are getting the most beautiful gift at the end of all of it and you did that you made that happen and I want you all to remain encouraged regardless of some of the negative statements that are out there. You are a great mom. Thank you all so so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this new series. If you have a topic that you would like me to touch on, go ahead and leave it down in the description box of this video and I will come back and make another one for you. If you've made it this far in the video and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and please do so right now. Click that red subscribe button. I would love to have you as a part of the family as we grow this community, as I share my pregnancy and introduce you to baby girl here due in September. I look forward to seeing you all right back here in the next video. And remember to always fill your cup. Bye.